Hello everyone, I am Santosh and welcome to my channel Learning Bits. So in this video, uh, today we are just going to discuss how exactly we are going to draw a simple shaded scene. So just going to contain a table and we are going to place a teapot on this table, whatever we are going to see this table. So first of all, let us design this table using OpenGL program and using that OpenGL program when we have designed and displayed the table on this table we are going to put a teapot on it and that is, that is what the basics scene we are going to do and this is going to be a simple shading program also this is going to help you even understand how exactly we need to bring in the concept of shading there is the lighting property into the scene and the material property into the scene and once this has been done and once this has been done or once or whenever you want to bring in the simple shading concept into the OpenGL environment or the program, we need to have the properties of the light as I told you and we need to have the properties of the surface. Hence, we are going to find a proper position or which are the position we need for the light along with the property and even the source of the property light and the property of the surface. So all these things we are going to discuss in this program and carefully understand how this program will be built so that we are going to have a table and a teapot. And so as a first part of this uh, program, we need to concentrate on how we are going to build a table. And bringing a teapot into my program is just an uh, one API away, that's all. And so now just observe, we are going to work on the cubes. Now, if I talk about this table, this table, whatever we are going to form now or we are going to build now, it is going to be something like this cube. Hence, so we are going to have a cube. So once we are going to have a cube, if I want to make this top of the cube, we are going to compress or we are going to scale down. We are going to scale down this cube with respect to which axis as this is going to be the y axis we are going to compress or scale down with respect to y axis and the z axis keep intact and the x axis keep intact only the y axis we are going to compress that's what we're going to use the cube for this purpose when i want to have a tabletop and now if i want to have a leg if i want to have a leg of a table Again, use the same cube and I need to scale it down. And where do I scale it down? So keep the Y axis intact because I need the length of the leg as it is. And I need to compress with respect to the X axis and compress or scale down with respect to Z axis. Hence, scale down the Z axis, scale down the X axis. That is going to become a leg for me. Hence, the same thing, do it for the other rest three cubes. And so now, whenever we want to have such table, how many cubes do we require? Yes, it is going to be the five cubes what we are going to deal with. And that is what have, we are going to have such five cubes. And the one cube compress with the y axis to make it to the top of the table. And compress with the X and the Z axis to form like something like this. And once this is done, so move it or translate to the appropriate position to the edge of a tabletop, something like this. So similarly, for the second leg, similarly translate it. And the next leg, so translate it. And the fourth leg, we are going to translate this. Now this is what exactly we are going to form the table is going to be. Now this is what the idea behind how we exactly do when we want to form the table. And the same logic we are going to bring in into the programming environment how exactly we are going to have such tables. So now whenever we are going to talk about the table. So now if I want to translate a leg. We have scaled down the cube with respect to axis and we have formed the leg. Now, when we want to translate, so carefully observe these are the corner points. This is the points where we need to 
translate the leg so that the four legs which we have formed using the cube will be in appropriate position or the place. This is what you need to understand from this. And so now with this idea, so let us start programming. Let us bring in this idea, whatever we talked, I talked about. That is having a cube and scaling down with the appropriate axis to form the tabletop or to form the four legs. Let us bring this logic into the programming. Now just see how the coding is going to work with. Fine. So now for that, I'm just going to have the source code, something where we are going to have OpenGL program. We are going to have the OpenGL program for this. I hope this is visible for you. Yeah, this should be more than visible. And uh, so now I've just uh, used the main function. This is the basic main function which we are going to use having the display mode to work in 3D scene of OpenGL program. We are going to use the double buffer and in this one buffer, we are going to use the depth buffer. So if you want to understand what all this APIs is going to do with. So you can just check out my earlier videos. So which I have given, which I have explained in detail why do you require all these APIs. Fine, you can just check out my previous videos for that. So now uh, in this, we'll just concentrate on the draw function. Fine. So now before we talk about draw function is one more important thing what we need to focus on. Fine. So I'll just tell you what that important thing is going to be. So now. Uh, particularly the scene what we are going to find now this should be in a perspective mode fine so now what is perspective and uh, what this perspective mode is or what is the other type of mode again you can check out my previous video where I clearly mentioned how we are going to represent a cube or how we are going to draw a cube being in perspective node using the camera function I will be using those perspective and even those camera function even in this program. So please check out my previous video to understand how this is going to work. Hence, now we are going to work this entire scene being in perspective mode and we are going to use the shading effect. Fine. So for that, there are some initializations which we need to use before we start program. Hence, to do such initialization, so let me have my own user defined function called my init. I'll be having my own user defined function called as my init. And I'm just going to define this my init function now. Fine. So now in this, the very first thing is, as I told you, I should work in the perspective node. So to make sure we are going to work in perspective mode, we are going to shift the matrix mode so which is by default in the model view we will be shifting to projection mode hence we are going to have gl matrix mode gl projection and for this matrix let me load the identity matrix and now i need to shift or i need to make sure whatever the scene i am going to build now that is going to be in perspective mode hence for that we are going to use gl first term we are going to use GL first term, so which is going to take six parameters. The left value, I am going to keep it to minus one. The right, it's going to be one. And the bottom, minus one. The top is going to be the same default unit coordinate system. That is what I'm using here as the first four parameters for the left, right, bottom, and the top of the clipping window. I'm using the same default unit coordinate system remember this and now the near plane and the far plane that is what the near value and the far value we are going to talk about now the near value whatever i want to have so i can give any value so even it can be negative value but i prefer or i suggest you to give only the positive values because even if you give negative value it will convert it to be a positive value so hence directly give it as a positive value something like i'll give 2 and i'm going to give 10 because this near value should be always less than the for value so remember this now with this once i've been used the gl system api this will make sure you are seen right now it is going to work in 
the perspective mode it is going to be in the perspective viewing and once this is done again i will shift back to the gl model view mode i should shift back to the gl model view that is what so swapping between the two modes from projection mode to model view mode again from model view mode to projection mode this the switching should happen whenever you want to change the type of view you require fine so now this is going to work so it's going to work in this is going to work in the perspective mode and i need to do few more initializations i'll come back and i will do it when it's needed right now fine so right now being in perspective mode i need to draw a cube and now whenever you want to draw a cube as if you check out in my previous videos i have been uh, drawing the cube using the eight points and drawing the six faces of a cube so i need not do that right now in this because your opengl program has got a api a dedicated api to draw a cube itself hence we'll use the dedicated api hence before using that before using that api so in the draw function the very first job what you want to do is gl clear i want to clear so right now i am going to clear the buffer bit as gl so color buffer bit along with this because i am using double buffer even i need to clear the depth buffer bit also hence i'll be clearing both the buffers and as as i'm using two buffers or double buffer i need to use glut swap buffers whenever you want to display something on the screen so in between this whatever you want you want you can display over here so as i told you i just want to draw a cube i want to draw a cube onto the scene and whatever the object you put on the scene if you want to view that object in the scene being in perspective mode that means you need to work with the camera function without camera function in perspective mode you cannot view any object and for that we are going to use glu look at function so which is going to take nine parameters that is the first three parameter is the camera where you position where you want to position the camera and for that i am going to give zero in the x axis zero in the y axis and let me give three in the z axis that is i am placing the camera at the origin of your entire korean system whatever you have got and in the z axis i am i am just going to pull it back and i am going to give the values three that that is what the first three values of the gl look at is going to stand at and the next three parameters i place the camera now where my camera should look at i have been pulled out the camera from the origin now i will make the camera to look at the origin that is where i am going to give 0 comma 0 comma 0 this is going to tell i place the camera at 0 comma 0 comma 3 looking at 0 comma 0 comma 0 and the next thing is that what is the up direction the up vector of the camera should be so i can tilt the camera to the y axis or tilt the camera with the y axis or the x axis or tilt the camera to the z axis in whatever the way you can tilt the camera but by default by default most of the graphics scene will tilt towards the y axis by default hence it is not tilting with x axis and zero it will have with the up direction in the y axis hence it is one it is not with the z axis hence zero this is going to make my camera function and now when you use the camera function make sure whatever the camera parameter you are going to set will be set on an entity matrix and you need to load an entity matrix using gl load entity function so now the camera is set now i can draw the object and i can look at the object now what object you want to display i just want to display i just want to display a cube and how do you do that no you need not worry about gl begin you need not worry about the eight points of the cube you need not worry about the six faces of the cube you can just you can just call a api called as gl 
GL solid Q or it is GLUT solid Q. I am going to have GLUT solid Q. This is the API which will draw a Q for me directly without calling any of GL vertex function, the begin function, end function and so on. Hence, the size by default give it as 1. This is going to give the 100% size for the cube what I am going to draw. Fine. Now, this should draw a cube for me. Now, we will just compile this, execute and see what output I will get at this point of time. I am just going to compile this. So, there are no errors. So, I can go for execution. Yeah. So, now this is the cube what I am going to have. Is it fine? So now without using GL vertex or GL begin GL end, you can see how I'm able to draw a cube. Now the next question is, is it really a cube? Is it going to be really a cube? Fine. So just to find out whether this has been a proper cube for me or not, I need to check it out by just rotating this cube. So now let me bring in the rotation operation for this program so that I can visualize my output effectively and check out whether my code development and the way it's going to work, is it working in a right way or not. Hence for that, let me bring in the rotation concept or let me apply the rotation into my programming. Hence to, to do that, I'm just going to call the idle function. I'm going to use the idle function callback function. And for this, I'm going to pass a parameter called as spin. And now the spin is going to be a user defined function. And so I'm going to have void spin. And in this, I'm going to have a theta value, something called as t, which I'm going to increase this t value by 0 0.5. And whenever the t value is going to be greater than 360, if you want to in depth understand how this is going to work, please check out my previous videos. I have been clearly mentioned over there. And even I have mentioned why I am using GL post read display function. All these APIs, basic APIs have been explained in detail. What is the purpose and how should be used all these things. And so I'm going to use gl float t equals zero you will understand easily what what all these things are doing if you just check out the previous programs or previous example programs with respect to open gl which have been explained okay so now i've been just brought in the spin function now now this t value whatever the theta value have been modified here i need to apply the rotation on this hence for that i'm going to have gl 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 rotate f function so the angle is the theta value and i want to rotate with x as well as the y axis and not z axis i want to rotate with the both the x and y axis i have brought in rotation now we'll see how the rotation of this is going to work so compile this i think there is no errors so we're going to execute yeah, this is working fine, but it is speed off and you can just see the speed is not uniform. The speed is not working uniformly. Fine, uh, and maybe the reason is uh, whenever going to apply rotation, again, I need to have the load identity function. I need to have the load identity function even for the rotation also. We'll just check, check it out whether this is going to work fine. Yeah, it has been, uh, it, it has been wiped up because I've uh, been use the entity function here and look at again. I'm using entity function, hence, this is losing some information about the camera function, right? And so, let the entity function be over there itself and let me reduce the speed and check it out. So, 0 0.1, I think this should be fine. Yeah, I'm just working fine. Okay, fine. If you just observe, if you just observe now, this is going to look like a cube, but the problem with this uh, cube is going to be the problem you can just observe. So the edges, whatever you see of the cube, but right now there should be some edges over here. 
and the edges of the cube is not clearly visible and this is because this is because we have not defined the properties of the light and even we have not defined the properties of the material if i bring in the light concept if i bring in the properties of the material concept into this program then i can bring in the shading concept so once i bring in the shading concept then this is going to be applied to shading and the edges will be clearly visible that is what right now though it is a 3d object it looks like a flat object is looking like a flat object if i want to make this object to appear to be a 3d realistic object they should talk of talk about the shading effect and if you want to bring in the shading effect we need to activate the light effect we need to activate the light in the scene and we need to bring in those light concept into my program and to do that we will see how exactly we can bring in the light effect into this that is what i told you i need to do some more initialization we'll do it later fine so now to bring in the light effect the very first thing is you need to enable the lighting effect in your program hence we are going to have gl enable and we need to enable the gl lighting effect hence i am going to pass the parameter as gl enable gl lighting and once i enable lighting effect so now i can make use of shading property in my program and so with this shading property if i want to have a shading property i need to have at least one light source you can have many at most eight in your open gl program but you should have at least one light source hence to add that we are going to say gl enable and we are going to enable a light source something like gl light gl light 0 we are going to have gl light 0 Now this is what we are going to have GL enable GL light zero. So now I have been enabled the light effect in my program as soon as I have been enabled a light source. Fine. So now once this has been done, check it out what has happened to your program. We'll just compile this and we'll execute. Now you can just see we have brought we have been brought the light effect into the program. and if you just observe case there is, there is some problem in this output the cube is not looking there is some something missing in the cube i think uh, all the faces has been drawn but particularly one face i have got the problem that is the back face fine right? and so now whenever going to talk about or when you design any object in 3d scene so i need to do one more initialization to this program so if i don't do that the back face will be overwritten by the front face and you'll be not able to see the back face that's the one problem what we are facing in that particular output the complete cube was with the white color without shading ends we are not able to recognize that but when i brought the shading effect so now we can clearly see there is some problem with the cube hence so now if i want to bring in if i want to even talk about the z buffer that is the back buffer what i want to talk we need to enable the z buffer and for that we are going to say gl enable so gl depth test we need to enable gl depth test if i do this even you will be able to see the back face which are, which was overwritten by the front face now it's absolutely fine now so now you can see a cube so which is going to have a proper shading effect even you can look at those edges you can just look at those edges also now once you once you are going to activate the light it is going to take the default position and it's going to have default color fine if you want to change the position of a light or if you want to change the color of a light that is where we are going to define the properties as we are going to define the properties for the light hence we'll just get back to the draw function and let me activate all those things fine right? so now let me give the position of the light as p or pos it's an array 
so which is going to contain four values that's the position where exactly this should be positioned and let me give the position as one uh, or let me put it at the top and zero one zero you can give whatever the value it is the point is going to be and i'm going to give the fourth parameter as one so which is going to tell this is going to be a distance light if it is zero it's going to be non-distant light but right now i want this light to be a distant light and so i'm going to give the pair the fourth parameter is going to be one the first three parameters are this is the position where i need to position the light at this point of time fine and later on i need to even change the color change the color of the light and so i'm going to say gl position col and i'm going to give what are the color i want so let me give it as red color and so one zero one comma zero comma zero and this is going to be the distance light and so i'm going to give it as one again the four parameters now once this is done i'm going to use this values whatever i have been defined here in an api where i'm going to set the position of the light by giving gl gl light fv i'm using gl light f because i'll be using floating point values and i'll be passing the parameter for this from this vector or the array and say i'm using fv and the first parameter is going to be so do you want this light property what it is going to be and to which light the property should be affected or should be initialized with so right now there's only one light which we have been active that is gl light zero so that is what the first parameter should be for the light zero right now i am giving the position and the second parameter should be gl position because i am going to set the position of the light and the position of light is going to be whatever i'm going to give as a as the position array in this variable what i have been set fine and the next i want to set the color again for the same light but now i can use ambient or i can use diffuse di i i can use diffuse and the color what i'm going to use col Fine. So now for this light, I'm using GL. You can understand what is GL position, but to understand what is diffuse, I can use diffuse here. I can use ambient. I can use specular, whatever the property you want to set for the light. So to understand what all these things, I've been under, I've been explained all these things in my earlier videos. You can check out with the elimination model what exactly this is going to be with. Fine. So once this has been done, I'm going to compile this. And I'm going to execute right so now you can just see so due to the position of the light you can see this face has been positioned and remaining all these things has been shaded out so now we'll see uh, there is some problem because only one face is getting the rotation speed and so now uh, we'll just uh, make sure we are going to bring this load entity function before this property so that this is going to solve the problem because even the light is also rotating along with the rotation of the cube and so now we'll just check it out from here fine now this is good because now the light is not rotating because i've been loaded with the entity function fine so now this is working fine now for me i've been set the light and i've been set the position of a light and, and so this becomes a simple shaded seen for me now the next job is i need to convert this cube to be the tabletop fine i need to convert this to be tabletop now let me apply rotation only in the y-axis i don't need with the x-axis fine now this is for the rotation i'm going to have so for this rotation so let me let me bring in some concept and let me lift the camera above and so i'll just give this as one so that i can visualize the tabletop yes the tabletop or if this is going to be the tabletop this will visualize properly and so i have been lifted the camera in the up direction and now uh, now with this uh, with this i am just going to i'm just going to scale it down and scale it up this particular cube 
so that it is going to look like a table top for me and for that and for that i'm just going to bring in the scaling operations i'm going to bring in the scaling operation now for this cube before i draw i need to scale and so gl scale f so now in the x axis it should be 100 percent scale y axis that is where i need to reduce i'll just give it as 0.25 that is it makes 25 percent and in z axis let it be as it is i'm going to compile this and i'm going to execute yeah fine this is looking uh, fine but uh, still the tabletop should be still thinner than what i'm looking right now and to add it we'll re reduce this more we'll make it um, five percent as 0 0.05 and let me execute this fine this is perfect i think this is perfectly visualizing like in tabletop that's fine that's good and the tabletop is done so our first job is done my next job is i need to make the four legs before making the four legs work on the one leg right now hence for that i am just going to create one more cube create one more cube a gl solid cube one and now let me execute right now there should be two cubes now uh, but there's only one cube what's the problem with this yeah actually there are two cubes there are two cubes the problem is one cube has been overlapped with the second cube with the same scaling operation same position same size so that's the problem what you're looking into one cube has been overlapped with the other cube now what should i do so that i'm i'm going to scale down only the one cube and the other cube should not be scaled down the first cube whatever i've been drawn should be scaled and the scaling should not be affected for the second cube but this is what happening in this code this is what exactly happening in this code now once i'm going to draw the first cube with the scaling operation the same scaling operation will be affected for the second cube also hereafter whatever the object you try to draw for all those object the scaling operation will be affected it's going to show its effect so now if i want to if i want to make sure the scaling effect is applied only on this cube not on this cube you need to bring in some apis the apis are enclose the scaling operation inside the api gl push matrix and the scaling will start here will be applied to the solid if i want to stop the scaling operation at this point we're going to say gl pop matrix fine so in between this i'm going to put the scaling operation so similarly let me let me even draw this second cube between the push and the pop operation itself so it's going to be an uh, easier programming technique for me in the further cases right so i'm just going to save this now now just uh, execute this program and check it out you need to have two cubes working on your screen uh, let me execute this but still there is only one cube fine the problem is the first cube has been scaled down on that i'm drawing a larger cube fine there are two cubes and the scaling operation has been applied on the first cube itself but not on the second cube so now uh, so now uh, let let me scale down the second cube and we'll see whether the first cube will be visible or not that's fine right yeah so now to just scale it down again i'll just have the same scale operation now this cube should be a leg for me this is going to be a leg for me and so now what should i do for that yeah i'm just going to reduce by five percent in the x-axis and the y should be intact and reduce five up to the five percent in the z-axis if this is going to be the case this should work yeah this is working fine i've got a tabletop and i've got a leg over here it's fine and the leg has been scaled down and it's 
it has been perfect with the size now what's the next job i need to translate this i need to translate the leg what i have been created now to the one corner of then one corner of your screen now just observe here just watch i'm going to have now these are the four points what i'm going to have use any one point for translation that is let me use or let me translate the leg to this corner which is going to say minus 0.5 comma minus 0.5 and 0.025 now this is the three points what i want to use or three values of a point what i want to use during the translation hence remember it is minus 0.5 or let me or let me just uh, minimize this fine uh, so now what is the first point is going to be the translate hence i'm going to have gl gl translate translate f and i uh, i want at this corner and so it is minus 0.5 comma 0.025 comma minus 0.5 Right. So now just compile this and execute. Yeah, it has been uh, it has been translated to the appropriate corner of a screen or of the edge of your table. It's fine. I think it's looking fine. Or else, if you want to push, if you want to push your leg inside the table top by altering this values, you can place the leg wherever you want. But right now, to keep it simple. I'm just going to keep at the edge of the table itself. This is going to work with the first leg. So now just look at look at this translate function. And now I will just shift this to APIs. Just to figure out what happens if I do so. I've been just shifting out first the scale operation and then the translation operation. If I do so, the translation will not be applied. Remember this. Fine. Hence whenever you're applying that translation scaling operation both at a time first there should be translation then the scaling should be applied so you need to maintain such order first you need to have the translation then the scaling should happen if so you'll be able to find the leg and if you just observe the leg should be pushed it down the leg should be pushed it down hence with respect to which axis i'm going to work with I'm going to work with the y axis. Now, what is the y value should be so that I'm going to push it down? I'm just going to give this as minus 0.25. Will this work? Check it out. Will this work or not? Still, it should be push it down. I'm just going to use as 0.5. Will this work? And it's working fine now. Fine. Hence, I need to work even with the y axis also. Hence, this should be minus 0.5 for all the legs with the y axis. Whereas for the x and the z, it should be the values what I have been given over here. This is minus 0.5, minus 0.5. Next should be minus plus, 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 minus with all the four combinations. Yes, I think we can do this now without the help of this diagram. Fine. Now, now I'll just copy this. I will just copy this and paste this over here as the four legs what I want. Fine. I have been just copied this as four blocks. And now this everything is going to be intact. The only thing what I want to change is this is going to be minus minus. This is plus minus. This is plus plus. And this is going to be minus plus. Now just execute this. Now this is what the table we were talking about and the table is, is ready and now the next job what it is left out is just to place a teapot on this table and I hope this is clear for you and to have the teapot on this again let me copy down let me copy down this entire thing and I am just going to paste it out and now instead of having GL solid cube now all this are not required 
or I may require the translation function the scaling function is not required right now and uh, I, I do require the translation function but we'll use it later but now if I want to have a teapot I'm going to use the function GLUT solid teapot so save this and I'm just going to compile this and execute yeah the teapot has been arrived fine but it is uh, big enough in the size now how do you reduce the size yes if you want you can make use of the scaling function you can use the scaling function to reduce the size of this teapot but uh, you can you can even reduce the value in the parameter of the GLUT solid teapot so that you're going to have lesser size than this for example I can use 0 0.5 which will make 50 percent whatever the size it has got reduce the 50 percent it is sufficient or if you want to reduce than this I'll go at 25 percent and so now I'm just going to have a teapot I think the size is more than sufficient now what exactly should happen the teapot should not be inside the table it should be on the table and for that I'm going to use the translate function in the translate function so this is going to be at the origin with respect to x axis and the z axis I need to pull out the camera or I need to pull the teapot above and y axis and this is going to be positive value let me give this as 1 or let me use as 0 0.5 in the y axis now just execute this and check it out oh this is flying flying over there but it should it was supposed to be on the table hence i need to reduce this size i'll give 0 0.25 it's working fine yeah it's almost on the table it's looking like it's on the table itself fine so this is how we're going to design a table and we are going to have a teapot on the table now this should serve your problem this should be the basic shading scene fine and now if you just observe the teapot and the table both are of the same color fine so now what should i do to change the color right now if you're thinking about gl color 3f sorry it is not going to work once you bring in the light effect into your scene your GL color 3F function will not work anymore. Fine. Now, if you want to give a different color or different shading effect for the different object in your scene, you need to define the material property or the surface property. And to, to do that, we are going to use one more API. But before that, let me define the color. I am going to give, define the color as GL float. I will just say M1 that is the color of the material one that is the table I am just going to give the color for this as uh, or or let me or let me keep the color of the table it as red itself you can do it later if you want you can change the color as I am showing to you let me just change the color of the teapot only fine hence for that I am just going to give GL float M and let me change the color of the teapot to green that is 0 1 0 and the distant property and now along with this now wherever you're going to add the teapot now for this i'm going to use the function gl material gl material fb this is the property what i'm going to use so for first parameter is of to which phase you need to apply for this i need to apply for the both front and the back and so gl front and back face for the both the faces of the object i want to apply the property what i'm defining and now what property you want to apply i'm just going to apply the diffuse property itself and the color what or the properties what i want to set is the array what i've been defined as m the array name whatever i've been given here I'm using the Tesla parameter now just execute and check it out whether the teapot is in different color or not uh, there is uh, this entire thing has been uh, vanished so now for this instead of using diffuse so let me replace this property as ambient so that we will we'll have actually what effect we are going to have this object with fine now when I make it as ambient 
now you can see uh, we can see the shading effect over here and i have been set the object color to be of green color but if you observe this is the combination of the light property which is emitting red and the material property is green hence for this case it's the mixture of red and green which is having such error of the object and if you observe we had decided that we had decided that we are going to have the object that is teapot to be of a different color whereas the table should be of the same color what earlier it was with the color red and this is because this is because now once you execute a function the same property will be applied for all the objects what you're going to define and now if the property should be applied only for the object what you are going to enclose or design in that case you need to enclose this so for that we are going to have gl i'm going to have gl push attribute and i'm going to have gl all attribute bit i'm going to push all the attribute bit and i'm going to enclose this between the push and i'm going to have gl pop attribute i'm going to have gl pop attribute so I'll just save this and compile i'm going to execute this now you can see now this is going to be in the color red and this is teapot is going to be in different color so you can just try out with the different colors whatever you want you can just make the light to be light is going to be of a color white by default and you can change the color of this uh, objects or you can play with this what color you are going to set with the light and what color you are going to set with the table now this is what you are going to have a simple 3d scene where we are going to have a table and a teapot on the table and we are going to set the properties for this using gl material gl light and so on so this is what i wanted to discuss in this video and uh, thank you for listening thank you for watching and if you have liked this video please put it in the comment section and for such further explanation do subscribe and follow my channel thank you